Justice. Wisdom. Temperance. Courage. Applying ancient philosophy to modern life, this is the Sunday Stoic. We must free ourselves from the prison of everyday affairs and politics. That is a quote by Epicurus, the founder of one of the rival schools to Stoicism. The way he dealt with the world, the overwhelming sense of obligation that we get from all the stuff we're supposed to keep up with, his, his solution to that was to go off to a garden to cut yourself off as much as possible from everyday affairs and politics. The Stoics advocate a different solution. You still engage with the world around you but you use your knowledge of reason to cut off the parts of life that are not useful to you. Get rid of the stuff that's not doing you any good. Focus on the things that are, but also take some time out to refresh yourself. We're going to hear from Seneca, Epictetus, and Marcus Aurelius today on those topics. How do you deal with the overwhelm? That's what I refer to it, all the stuff we're supposed to keep up with. Got to change the oil in your car this week. Make sure you call your call your mom. Oh yeah, don't forget to pick up the milk on the way home today. Oh, we got to go to Billy's baseball game and then to dance recitals and then to you know karate practice and and then we have to uh, make sure to uh, get a new shingle shingles for the roof and then we have to uh, go plant the garden and da 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 goes on and on and on. I refer to all this collectively as the overwhelm uh, and. I see Stoicism as a shield to protect ourselves from that overwhelm and to deal with it bit by bit instead of letting it crush us all at once. So today's readings, um, you're going to hear from myself, my wife, as well as uh, Christy Turgeson, who was nice enough to email the show, email us, and uh, offer to do a reading from Seneca. If you would like to do a reading for the show, Email me at sundaystoic at gmail.com. The Anchoridian by Epictetus, Chapter 8 Seek not that the things which happen should happen as you wish, but wish the things which happen to be as they are, and you will have a tranquil flow of life. The Thoughts of Marcus Aurelius, Chapter 4 A Paraphrase of Verse 3 Men seek retreats for themselves, houses in the country, on the seashore, or in the mountains. You too desire these things, but it is the mark of the most common sort of men. It is in your power, whenever you choose, to retire into yourself. Nowhere is more quiet and restful than in your own soul. Tranquility is a well-ordered mind. Constantly give yourself this retreat. Renew yourself, reflect on your principles, and cleanse your soul. Why are you discontented? The badness of men? Remember that rational beings exist for one another, and to endure is a part of justice, and men do wrong involuntarily. Maybe you desire fame. Remember how soon everything is forgotten. Remember to retire into this little territory of your own. Do not distract yourself, but be free and look at things as a human being, as a citizen, as a mortal. But always keep these two things in mind. Things do not touch the soul. Perturbations come only from opinion, which is within. And that things you see change immediately and will no longer be. Think of all the changes you have already seen. The universe is change. Life is opinion. More letters to Lucilius by Seneca. Letter 2 on discursiveness in reading, verse 1 and 2. Letter 28 on travel as a cure for discontent, verse 2. Judging by what you write me and by what I hear, I am forming a good opinion regarding your future. You do not run hither and thither, and distract yourself by changing your abode, for such restlessness is the sign of a disordered spirit. 
the primary indication to my thinking of a well-ordered mind is a man's ability to remain in one place and linger in his own company. Everywhere means nowhere. When a person spends all his time in foreign travel, he ends by having many acquaintances, but no friends. Socrates made the same remark to one who complained. He said, Why do you wonder that globetrotting does not help you, seeing that you always take yourself with you? The reason which set you wandering is ever at your heels. What pleasure is there in seeing new lands, or in surveying cities and spots of interest? All your bustle is useless. Do you ask why such flight does not help you? It is because you flee along with yourself. You must lay aside the burdens of the mind. Until you do this, no place will satisfy you. Thanks again to Christy Turgeson from New York. That was an excellent reading. So how do we keep out this overwhelm, all the stuff we have to keep up with? We have to do it, but we don't need it to crush our souls. Well, Epictetus says, first of all, align your desires with reality. There are things you got to do. There are some things you have control over. You can say no to some things. So you might want to use that, uh, that knife of reason to crop off the crap you don't have to do and say no a little more often. The other stuff you should bear cheerfully because you have no power over it over whether you do it or not, so bear it cheerfully and it will help things go more smoothly for you. Marcus Aurelius is recommending what seems to be a form of meditation. He says, why would you want to go to the country, to the mountains, to the sea, when you can go within and find peace? He says that he, ha uh, he finds that uh, a well-ordered mind is what tranquility is basically so uh, he close, closes his eyes and basically takes the problems of the day and brings them before the stoic virtues and says how should I solve these problems knowing what I know about stoicism and he says first of all if it's people that are bugging him maybe someone's whining about something or Whatever, he says, remember, people misbehave not because they're evil, but because they're uneducated. They don't know any better. So it's not their fault. So I will not be mad at people for their behavior. I can help to educate them so they can see why what they're doing is wrong, but I'm not going to be mad at them. He also says that... Patience is a part of justice, that stoic virtue we discussed already. So to be impatient with someone is to be unjust with them. So rather than going on vacation or going on holiday, as some of our European listeners may do, <laughs> he says go within and bring up your the things that are bothering you. You can, you can easily solve them. This is why you're studying philosophy, so that answers... Are easy to find because you have a set of principles that you live by. What if it's fame that's bothering you? He says, well, don't worry about it. Fame is stupid. <laughs> You're going to die. The people who would know, let's say you are famous, the people who knew you are going to die and then you'll be forgotten anyway. So don't get hung up on fame. Let's say I was worried that if I didn't have 10,000 downloads of my podcast that I wasn't going to be happy. Well, that's not in my power. It's not going to happen. And it's not in my power. Now, what is in my power? I can try to do a pretty good job. I've been working on this podcast for like four hours a day off and on when my kid's asleep and deleting things and redoing things. And my wife and I recorded a new introduction. It's a lot of work. But why do I do it? Because I want to know that even if no one downloads this show, I put some effort into it. I tried to do a good job within the limits of my capabilities. One issue you may notice is I have a, a nice microphone plugged in here, uh, but I don't have a sound studio, so you can hear the birds outside. You might hear my kid crying in the background. So what? It's beyond my control. Now, he also says, and this is a big one, disturbance comes from within. 
If someone screams at you, calls you a name, if you get upset, that's your fault. If, if, if you are really shook up by the events of the day, you have to give a big speech tomorrow, you're all nervous about it, that's your fault. You can rehearse it as much as you can. Anything else, you know, if you're worried about how other people will react to your speech, that is trying to, to rely on externals for your happiness. And that is something that will result in misery. So, disturbance come from within. Remember, perceptions. How you perceive things is up to you. Someone can yell at you and you can say, those are words said by a person who's not very wise. So I will take no heed of what they said. And you move on with your day. Personally, I need to work on my own daily meditations. I used to do some mindful, m mindfulness, mindfulness meditations and I found it to be very helpful. Um, there are some mindfulness meditation MP3s on uh, the Stoicon Facebook page you might check out. Um, and there's some books based on kind of the, the Buddhist uh, uh, mindfulness uh, uh, lifestyle that you can, you can find as well that are, that are pretty helpful. But when things start to overwhelm you, take a breath, bring your Stoic principles to mind, and, and uh, take the burden off your shoulders. This is one of the reasons why we repeat some of these principles over and over again. Uh, just like if you've, you know, I used to be an altar boy in the Catholic Church growing up, and you'd hear the same sermons, the same stories over and over again. But that drills them into your head so you know them front and back, and you can bring them to bear when some life crisis arises. The same thing with a life philosophy. If you don't repeat it over and over and over and over again, then you don't have it internalized. Now, the last reading from Seneca, he says that the signs of a well-ordered mind is uh, can be found in someone who, who stays put. That doesn't mean you can't travel, but a person who wanders all over the place can't seem to find happiness in their own shoes has a problem. Um, if you travel everywhere, then you are rooted in nothing. And uh, you need to work on yourself, get your mind right, because when you do go on, you do go on holiday... Yeah, you're still you. You're still in your own head. You can't get out of that. So you want to have enough uh, training, enough uh, self-reflection, enough uh, work on yourself enough uh, so that the person you have to live with every day is someone you can stand and you want to live with every day because you can't get away from you. So it's not just about vacation, but it's about all kinds of things. All the stuff that keeps you busy. Are you staying busy because you want to or because you're running from yourself? Um, I know Teddy Roosevelt used to just stay busy all the time because he felt if he stopped, his depression would catch up with him. Well, maybe you should work on that. And instead of working constantly but getting nowhere, really, uh, you should work on, on yourself. A little bit from time to time. So how do we deal with this? Well, the overwhelm in life. Well, cut out the stuff that you can, that you don't want to do. The rest, accept. And don't gripe about it. Instead of waiting till next summer to go on vacation to get away from life, practice going within for five minutes a day and relaxing if you need to think about how you might apply stoicism to your life to the problems you're facing and then lastly make sure you're not running from yourself and also consider staying put don't exhaust yourself trying to get away stay put read a good book uh, don't always be on the go if you can help it a well-ordered person doesn't need to get away from themselves. They are happy with their own company. All right, that's enough of rambling for me. So if you want to read for the show, email me, sundaystoic at gmail.com. And uh, you can also suggest show topics and uh, suggestions, etc., etc. And I hope to hear from you. Carpe diem. And keep on keeping on.